following tutorial tries to discuss some of the pre-planning that is necessary before undertaking river sections and how with a little bit of planning a lot of time can be saved in terms of the processing if a little bit of thought is taken before the actual sections are surveyed. So I quickly look at the original set of data that was used in the preliminary example and zoom in. You can see here we have the baselines and the, uh, the surveyed features as before and you'll note that the baselines conveniently start and end in exactly the same place as the uh, hard bed does. That's because this data was generated for the tutorials and we just duplicated in the first and the last points. Obviously in the real world that's not going to be the case. These baselines won't necessarily exist. Now you can obviously go out and survey these locations and um, duplicate the points as we have done here but that's perhaps a little bit um, untidy and doesn't guarantee that when you actually come to take the long sections that the changes are going to be correct. In order to get the changes between the sections correct and obviously allow for any curvature, it's a good idea to prepare the data beforehand and Enforce can help us with that. So I'm going to go to a model here which has already been prepared, which is the theoretical center line extracted um, from a CAD model which runs through these sections. What we're going to do is we're going to get Enforce to calculate uh, perpendicular sections along this feature and then we're going to generate points from those cross sections so we can then actually use those to plan the locations for our survey. So to begin with we go up to sections and come down to river cross and I'll just say yes I want to use a feature. I'm not too worried about sectioning anything but I have to section something so I'll just leave it on features for the moment. Under parameters I need to specify how far left and right i.e. how wide our river is including the extents of the banks so I'm just going to say 25 and 25 in this example and how often do we want to actually take these cross sections. Um, I'll set it to be every 10 meters so that I've got plenty of leeway for error. Press OK. I click my center line and force calculates the sections for us. Obviously there's nothing there for it to do but it'll still go through the, the rigmarole anyway. So nothing in the previews we would expect but I'm going to close these down I'm going to call this one section locations. OK that and redraw obviously the, the preview disappears. If I now go up to the sections menu and come down to the bottom you can see we can calculate coordinates from the cut lines. If I do that, press OK, wants to know a name for the uh, coordinate block it's about to create so I'll call this one baselines. Now it's asking us do we want to basically reverse the sense of these sections so that we're looking in the, in the river section sense so I'll say yes to that. If I switch back to my project manager now, we can see a coordinate block called baselines. We have to delete the first two points because that is the first and the last point on our center line and doesn't really mean anything. After that, we can start to see triplicates of points BL001, 2, 3, and so on. You'll notice in the dimensions column we have the relevant changes that go with them. We've got three points here because if I, if I show it graphically, we have a point on the left bank, a point on the right bank, and obviously a center point. And in this situation, we would be assuming that the zero change point is in the middle, negative to the left, positive to the right. Um, now that will obviously have implications for whether you're trying to tie your river sections in with existing sections. Some sections won't have been taken, so you could use this approach. However, if you're trying to um, overlay your sections with sections that have been taken from previous years, then you'll probably need to remove all these center points so that the left bank actually starts, or rather, so that the chain starts at the left bank. If I create a model of that, with some baselines, and I'll use the baseline points, and I go to the camera, obviously, we have exactly what we did before. However, if I go to my survey and do Alt B for back cloth, and move the back lines, base lines over. Sorry, press OK. We can now see where the base lines come in with respect to the uh, the survey data. Obviously, these green ones are in the background, or rather the back cloth. This is obviously in the current model. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually retake our river sections using the new baselines so that we can take advantage of these dimensions that are appearing on the first point in each section so that our sections are correctly placed along the centre line of our river. 
So to begin with, I need to remove the existing base lines in there. Here we can start to see some of them here. So that I don't have to go through the entire um, set of points manually, I'm just going to make sure I haven't selected anything to begin with. Right click and choose Select. And I will say Select anything starting BL, i.e. BL star. Press OK. Delete that. If I now go back to the graphics on the model, you can see we have no more baselines. These baselines are obviously in the back cloth. OK, so now we have our river section data without its baselines, and we have some, uh, some new baselines generated by Enforce in a back cloth. What we need to do now is to relate the two together. If I query this feature here, we can see it's HB4. That 4 obviously is completely different to the number of the baseline behind it, which is BL14. So what we have to do is to renumber the baselines so that they tie in with the with the features. Or we would do the reverse. We would have to recode or rather renumber the strings that we've surveyed, including the hard bed, um, sorry, including the left bank and the right bank points and the water levels to tie in with our baselines. Obviously if this is a survey that's about to be calculated then you can just load the baselines onto your logger and you can see where you are as you go and you can obviously number the strings as you survey them so they'll come back in perfect and you can run the sections off straight away. However before we can run these sections I've got to recode or rather renumber these baselines so that they tie in exactly with these surveyed features. So I'm just going to do that now. What I've got to do first of all though is come out of this model, go to the baselines model, and backcloth that one with the survey. And just to make it easier to tell one from the other, I'm going to change the backcloth color to dark grey. And as we bring them in, there we can see our strings. Okay, so I know that this first section here is BL1. So I'll have to renumber the baseline. So under Features, go to Recode. I'll just recode the whole string to BL1. Noting that the attribute change is already on there for us. That's assuming, obviously, that the first change is zero. We could obviously change that when we came to actually take our cross sections. Next one is BL2, so even though it says 6 here at the moment. I go Features. Recode, make that BL2. And if I query the point, and go to attributes, you can see that's actually at chain age 50. Okay, now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump ahead to a point at which I've actually done all the preparation and also deleted all the unnecessary baselines.